Our journey begins with getting the Hrup. As I was saying, our game starts by beating the AI to the Hrup, and also I'm not going to have a capital, instead I'm going to make my first territory someone else's capital so I can achieve this neat glitch where we have no city cap. Now I don't have much time before the AI builds an entire civilization in 5 turns, so we're going to commit die in order to respawn as a larger, better army on a completely different end of the map. Now that we've used mitosis to replicate, we cast the spell of bippity boppity and this city is now our property. My greatest moment was followed by the realization that I'm surrounded by 10 AIs because I'm a bumbling buffoon that chose the wrong settings. It should have been 10 people spread across two continents, but now it's 10 people crammed into one continent, and I have a feeling the others don't appreciate my sense of humor. As is evident in the fact that I've lived next to Pink for only 20 turns and he's already declared war on me. But luckily, I'm known as a man of peace, and I'm totally not evading this war because I don't have the troops to fight against the hunt. Anyways, through the power of time travel, we can go back in time to raise our war support and prevent them from declaring war. This can be easily accomplished by accepting their demand, making a demand of my own that they'll never accept, filing a grievance with HR against them for denying my ignorant request, then immediately withdrawing my demand for an additional 5 war support. As you can see, through the power of being an extremely indecisive and wishy-washy person, in just 3 turns we've delayed their request to declare war and we have doubled our war support. They still did declare war, but by delaying we are now given the option to accept immediate surrender and the only option for them is to offer vassal ships since they took zero of our territory. Combining this with the power of the expansionist culture known as the Romaine Lettuce, we were able to build a large army of 10 squads that may not look like much, and that's because they aren't, which is why we brought a thousand of them. So after 2 extensive battles of throwing countless bodies in front of my archers, we were able to take our second city. Still using our horde of plebs, we were able to advance to the early modern era as the Kramer, since I plan to settle down and start a family after this battle. However, after taking their capital and negotiating to take all but one piece of land, I discovered a fool that mistook my land for Chuck E. Cheese. And well, I just can't have that. Which is why I had Munch's make-believe band punish them with a thousand arrows. Unfortunately for me, I was going up against another elite unit that was more than two times as powerful as my troops and they could one-shot all of my units even while defending. Luckily, their city was not as well guarded, and we could take it using not just any plebs, but our prestige plebs. After taking all their cities from their civilians, which were also more powerful than my units, I felt a sharp pain. Oh, that's just the English stabbing me in the back as they started the third consecutive war against me by besieging my city on the other side of the map. Through my elite leadership and about 20 save reloads, I fended off the first wave. However, they followed this up with another wave, which I promptly ran away from. Totally because I'm an amazing general with shocking foresight and spidey senses, and not at all because my weak peasant death horde got completely destroyed multiple times by an ambush of much better units and I reloaded to save. <clears throat> Anyways, we let them have the city and instead waited for them to come to us on the high ground. After winning that battle, I discovered that our power of limitless city cap had worn off and we were hemorrhaging influence. While fixing this, I also discovered that quite literally everyone that has heard the name Agent 47 hates me. However, the sting of this unfortunate truth was quickly balanced out with the realization that I can now upgrade all my troops to go from awful to mediocre. Wow, that's a lot of damage. After using our dominant crosswoman to take Babylon, we were able to end the war with yellow and get the only piece we've seen in the first nine hours of playing this game. I don't know why I had to make the difficulty this high, I guess I just wanted to feel like a big strong man. Also, I chose the Muggles for the early modern era because I'm a big fan of the movies. Jar Jar Binks is my favorite character. After 700 years of peace and harmony, the Edo Japanese decided they had enough and declared war with no troops in any of their territories. But somehow, they had 700 fame that I had to close out in 80 turns to win the game. Our troops from centuries ago performed just as well on the light green team and we were able to take one of their cities with relative ease. This gave me enough stars to get to the next era, which I chose the Italians because, well, they got a nice pasta and an you know why. After forgetting that I was at war with Light Green for several turns, they offered their surrender. But then I realized they owned the entirety of the other continent, which is why their fame is growing so much. As a self-respecting, tyrannical leader, I can't just simply let them be at peace in this distant land, so I began a voyage across. Once we saw land, it took my army of confused soldiers 40 real minutes to find a place they could park the boat. Taking so long, in fact, I was able to upgrade my crosswoman to become armed buses then take their capital, which was the only piece of land they had left on the right side of the map. And I had the pleasure of spending five battle turns fighting boats. I hate boats. Getting back to the new world, when I finally did land my troops, I had them split up and immediately begin burning down villages. Then I chose my new culture for the contemporary era, this time going with the Turks, because their public schools teach their children how to optimally research nuclear technology in record times. Unfortunately, our senile armies from the mainland took way too long to get here, and we lost the battle on war support. So I paid 5,400 gold to gain above 20 war support and declared a surprise war. After taking that city, we encountered some villagers, which were very useful for testing out my fancy new thousand-year-old elephants. Then we made peace with Light Green and repeated this process until we got first place and won the fame victory. Military arts blossomed most under your rule. Oh, you haven't seen the least of it yet.
We now have planes, gunners, and modern tech. We also made the all seeing eye Sauron so we can find more oil and invade more innocent civilizations to make bigger guns. However, unfortunately, the second upgrade that will reveal all the oil on the map is locked until we get, well, more oil. I guess we were also destroying the planet with our pollution. I thought this was a high score type of situation, which would mean I'm winning, by the way. Luckily for the world, I have a surefire way to lower the population. I, I, I mean, I mean the pollution. But that's right, I'm talking good old fashioned war. And although I was going to do the same to purple, it seems the British are blocking our path to saving the world. So the only reasonable solution is to remove the British from the face of the earth. But I'm a man of ingenuity, so let's use some bombers to clear out a cluster. Then we'll take this anti-air unit to kill this medieval horse. Now that's done, back to the matter at hand. Time to erase purple. And I'll save you some time, it was a lot of this. After taking all of their land, they had only one city left, but unfortunately, it is on an island. I cannot land my soldiers on this island, and soldiers cannot siege from the water. Being an American, the only solution I could think of was running multiple bomber strikes on this island to destroy it, since I can't quite afford nukes at this juncture. And yes, I did try increasing the number of bombers. That did not work either. We'll have to put a pin in that one. Anyways, in order to get nukes, helicopters, and better planes, we need more oil. And wouldn't luck have it, our neighbor had oil. So we made a trade deal. I traded my bullets for the oil, and now we were able to make planes with even bigger booms, missile silos, and the eagle eye that will show us where we can get even more oil. The new VTOL jets are working great against these primal tribes, and we're having a real family moment right now. Everyone get into the frame. I need to take a quick picture to remember this time of great bonding. Oh right, you're still here. Thanks for waiting. This independent tribe thought it would be a good idea to take their musketeers and horsemen to come fight my helicopter. Now, I'm not quite sure what Fast and the Furious movie you think this is, but you came to the wrong house for it. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm very proud to announce that we are beginning production on weapons of mass destruction. Thank you. Thank you. Also, it appears that whomstever these Freedom Eagle looking people are, they have a lot of planes. Too many planes, in fact. For this reason, I'm starting production on even more nukes. No, no, you're breathtaking. And you know, as I'm looking at the main map again, I'm not quite sure I like how pink pink is, so I think we're going to remove them from the face of the earth as well. Somehow these independent people are taking over the second continent now, so I think it's time we whip out this mega tank helicopter army to dismiss this little issue. And you know what? Let's call in an airstrike. Come on down, VTOLs. You got this. Okay, that's fine. They get a little shy when there's a crowd. We'll just use our copious amount of armored lethal force to deal with this little kerfuffle. And good people, I have another huge announcement. We have assembled a deadly army of cold-hearted killers. That's right, I'm talking about our army of construction workers. Look at these absolute units. You should be scared of anyone with posture this good. Anyways, we are the greatest religion now as well. We just got three religious upgrades in a row, which obviously I made them all boost war support because I have not a single salt grain of a clue how any of that is calculated. It's about 1 a.m. and I'm starting to get a little tired. I just accidentally did an airstrike that took out two of my own heavily armored vehicles, and then the game told me we lost two units in that siege, and that 99 of those units were helicopters. Which, I don't know, it adds up to me. Also, it's not helping that the game is having awful audio shredding, and the announcer man is being very scary. <laughs> To balance out the scary, here's a missile strike. Workers continue to prove themselves a valuable part of our team as they beat up these Civil War era settlers with their toolboxes while the helicopters blasted the rest of them into the Shadow Realm. And shout out to the bonuses from the religion of Big Chungus for turning our unjust war into a fully supported crusade. Speaking of which, Brown happens to exist right next to us here and they have both aluminium, oil, and uranium. We'll be taking that. The audio shredding has gotten even more demonic and I think we'll end it right- I'm just kidding, I wouldn't leave you hanging like that again. We're going to keep launching more nukes until the world ends or the game breaks. All right, the nukes didn't launch that time because purple took our uranium, and I guess because we can't make them anymore, now we can't use the ones we already have. It's not like we lost the instruction manual. I have it right here, but hang on, I'll fix it. Kaboom! But it doesn't stop there, folks. It's 2 a.m. and I'm not stopping until I run out. And I have a lot of nukes. The game glitched out, so I reloaded an autosave and I hear the nukes going off, but it's just a bunch of white. Let me see the nukes. Now, at this point, I could safely stop. But I'm not going to, because this is for the nine hours you all made me fight with a horde of peasants that use sharpened broomsticks. And these ones are for all you beautiful people watching. And that one's brand new tech we call it a tactical stealth nuke. No sound, no explosion cloud, we had a tactical. Somehow, we are now getting paid 100,000 gold per turn in army upkeep. This is the easiest job of all time right here. Let's celebrate by nuking people for making an island base. All right, it's doing the infinite load wheel thing, and I can't load the last three saves now because I get error messages on all of them. We did it. We broke the game again. Well, I don't know about you, but I feel, I feel pretty good, actually. If you enjoyed this video, consider checking out our other war crimes, and as always, thanks for watching.